this video we're going to be covering in detail how the layered texturing works in PBR Painter as well as some more general concepts about layering. Now I will say that this video does assume some general knowledge in Blender so we're not going to be covering the really basic fundamentals of Blender itself we're just going to jump straight to how to use the add-on. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set up my material and this is basically what you're going to do every single time you create a new material using PBR Painter and we can do that with this button over here. Now you have a couple of options when you do this so you can set a fake user which is the general concept in Blender of basically saving that material and keeping it saved even when it's not assigned to a mesh. You can also choose to back up the current material so if you have nodes set up in your existing material and you want to save a backup of that one you can do that as well and finally you can choose to use your existing material here as the background so we're going to be talking about layers and this background is basically going to act as a background layer that you then build upon within PBR Painter. I'm going to leave the shader editor open here because that's going to show you kind of what's happening as you add new layers to your material. So first I'm going to click set up setting this as a fake user clicking OK. Now what's going to happen is this is basically all ready to go to add layers to make your PBR Painter material. Nothing has changed in here yet because we haven't actually added any layers. However, because this is now set up, this principal shader is linked to the interface here. So if we click this button here, which is the background, we can actually adjust the color and all the other settings from this shader from our PBR Painter interface. So you don't actually need to go into this shader editor anymore. Okay, so now that we've got through the kind of preliminary setup to open up your material, I'm just going to take about 30 seconds to talk about what layered texturing is and how this is going to work within Blender. Generally, layers will let you build up your complex materials one part at a time. So this is going to let you control different aspects of your material and keep those different parts separated so you can work on them independently. All right, so in PBR Painter, the way we do this is we just click this little add layer button every time we want to add a new layer. Now, I'm not gonna go into detail about these settings here at the moment because I'll talk about that later. So I'm just gonna click okay. Now, when you first add a layer, you will notice that it appears as a node in here, but there are no connections because we haven't turned on any of these channels in here. Channels are basically the different inputs that you can put into your principled shader. So for example, we have color, metallic, roughness, and all the other normal ones that you would normally see in here. So I can turn on a channel like this by clicking this cross, and when I do that, by default, it's going to pick up the color or metallic value or whatever it is from the background. And before I go any further, something I just want to mention is that if you're seeing extra buttons in here when you turn on a channel or make some other change, it's because you're using a specific preference under add-on preferences. And that is this auto refresh material. So if I make this one never or cycles only, that's what this button is. So this is basically letting me refresh the material anytime I need to. Whereas if you set this to always, which is what I had it set as, it's just gonna refresh the material every time you change something in here. And that's something I explained in a previous video, but just to point it out in case you're wondering why there's a button missing from my panel in here. All right, so moving on. So if I change this channel like this, I'm now changing the overall color of that material because this layer is now sitting on top of my background and it's covering up that background color. To demonstrate this, I can change this little slider here, and this is the opacity of the layer. So if we put that down to zero, we've basically removed the layer, and now it's only our background that's coming through. So we can do the same thing with other channels as well. So I can turn on metallic, and I can put that to one. I can turn on the roughness, drop that down. And as you can see in here, this is now building up our node tree and the links between the nodes based on the channels that you turn on in here. And of course we can add another layer in here and click OK and do the same thing. And once again we have a new layer appearing in here but there are no connections because we haven't turned on the channels. So I can turn on the color again and now what you'll see is the color from this one is completely gone because we have a layer sitting on top of that one that's now covering up the color information from that previous layer. One thing that is very important to remember in PBR Painter is that when you don't turn on a channel, for example, in this case, I'm not turning on the metallic, it will use whatever the metallic is from the previous layers, or if there are no previous layers with metallic, it's just gonna use that background metallic. So if you want to actually cover up the metallic of a layer, you have to actually turn that on. 
otherwise it's going to use whatever is underneath. Okay, so that's the main concept of the layering. The next thing I'm going to talk about is masking. And masks are going to let you allocate different layers to different parts of your mesh. So to demonstrate that, I'm going to add a new mask. So masks are specific to layers. So depending on which layers you have selected in here, it's going to show you the masks for that layer. So clicking add new mask. Now there are tons of different options for masks and I'm not going to go through that. Again, this is going to be in a later video, but I'm going to add a simple one. So I'm going to go procedural noise like this, clicking OK. Now what you'll notice when I do that is that now I have this layer is only being applied to the parts of the mask that are white or more accurately, it's being applied based on the grayscale value of the mask at each point. So what we can see, by the way, I click this button and basically that lets you preview the mask. What we can see is that where this is basically white, we are getting this color coming through like that. And where it is black, we're seeing the background. So to make that obvious, I'm going to now show what happens when I change this opacity. You can see that this mask has basically decided where this layer is going to sit on the material. And then the other materials underneath or the other layers underneath and the background underneath is allowed to come through where this mask is black. So if we turn on the metallic, we can see that now it's a zero metallic in the same place where we have this particular color. And you can see that in here like this. In a later video, I'll go through how to add many, many different masks, which you can do in PBR Painter. But for now, that's as much as I'm gonna explain in this video. The next thing I'm gonna talk about is how you're actually blending your layers together. So for now, all I've talked about is how when you put the color on on this layer, it replaces the color underneath and that's based on the masks and everything else. But you can change how that is happening based on this blend option here. So the default is mix and that's just gonna mix based on these opacities and these masks. But this, you can change this to all sorts of different things in here as well. So for example, if we do something like multiply, what it's now doing is it's now taking this original color in here multiplying by the value of this color and then giving you the final result. And so you can change that to do all sorts of different stuff. So you can add, you can overlay all sorts of different things in here. And of course you can do that separately for each of your different channels. Now I showed how you can change the opacity of a layer by adjusting this slider. You can also do that individually for every channel. So as we can see, we can just basically drop this opacity down, but we're still keeping the metallic opacity up. And so you can have fine control over how you kind of blend those different channels across layers. All right, so before I finish the video, I'm gonna talk about one more thing, and that is a special case of blending between layers when you're using the normals. So to do that, I'm gonna get rid of this top layer, and I'm gonna turn off these different channels here. So I'm not going to go into the fundamentals of normals, other than to say they let you add bumps and essentially topography to your surface. And in PBR Painter, you can blend normals together across layers in a very special way, which I'm gonna demonstrate now. So for a start, I'm gonna change this normal channel on my base layer to procedural noise. And again, this is skipping through stuff quickly that's gonna be explained in other videos. Now, if I add a new layer, and again, I turn on the normals. What's happening now is because this second layer has essentially flat normals, at the moment, all it's doing is it's overriding the normal information in this underlying layer. So we can see that again, if we change this opacity, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna again add procedural normals and I'm gonna change this to something other than noise to add a different pattern like this. And what you will often want to do with normals is you want to stack them on top of each other so that the end result is a combination of the two bumps from the two different layers. Now you could change the opacity like that and you get kind of the right result, which you can kind of see that effect, but it's not actually accurate. PBR Painter uses a very specific node setup that is more mathematically correct. It's fairly complex, but the good thing is you don't have to worry about it because it's all done for you. All you have to do is click this button that says combine normals. And when you do that, at the moment, it looks like it's actually probably a bit too much because these are very intense normals. So it's actually creating some extreme normals. So what we can do is we can actually reduce the strength of these normals to give something more realistic like that. But what you'll see is when you do that, what's happening now is we get this combination of 
the normals from the two different layers. The other thing you can do with this combine normals option is you can actually control the normals underneath this layer. So this underlying normal strength basically lets you control how the normals underneath come through. So for example, we can drop this and it's actually controlling or dulling those normals underneath. This becomes really useful when we're mixing with masks because basically what that means is that wherever you have this layer, the normals underneath are gonna be dulled or maybe enhanced. And then everywhere else, they will be defined by whatever you set up in this layer. So you can get some really cool effects by doing that, which I can actually demonstrate now. So I'm gonna turn on a mask for this layer. And again, I'm just gonna use a procedural noise mask to make it nice and simple. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play with some color ramps. And again, this is gonna be something I cover in a later video. What you can see is we have the underlying normals coming through and then the masked area is combining the normals of this layer with the normals of this layer. So again this is just to demonstrate that the way that the normals are blended in PBR Painter is very specific and unique compared to the other channels. Final thing I'm going to go through which is another part of the normal blending that's unique is layer bumping. And that's basically going to let you bump the entire layer itself out of the surface or into the surface. So to demonstrate this, I'm going to get rid of this bottom layer. So now we just have this kind of normal effect like this. And I'm going to turn on layer bumping. And what you can see, what's going to happen with that is based on this masking, it's actually going to apply a bump to this layer itself. So it doesn't just have the normals from this pattern, it's now also bumping that out of the surface. So you can control the strength of that bumping. Like that. So you can actually make these look like they're little raised areas that are coming out of the surface. Now you can invert that by ticking this. And as you can see, it's now looking like it's embedded into the surface. So that's another special thing you can do when you're mixing normals together. Okay, I'm going to wrap up the video here because there's going to be lots more explanation in the upcoming videos, but hopefully the concept of layering and what it all means and how it works in PBR Painter is now a bit clearer. In the next video, I'm going to go into the masking system itself and I'm going to talk about some of the things that I was doing quickly and some other features in a lot more detail so that you can understand exactly how this is all working and how to build up some really nice complex masks using the PBR Painter masking system. So thanks for watching this video and I will catch you in the next one. Cheers.